Hey guys, I'm just popping on here to do a really quick introduction because in T minus three minutes, I'm going to be laying down flat. I know it's not a big deal that I'm laying down flat when I told you guys that I do this every single day to manage my symptoms. Every afternoon from one to three o'clock, you can find me flat in my bed, waiting for my head to stop doing all of the things that it's doing. But today's flat is going to be different. Today's flat is actually going to last for the entire weekend. I am doing the 48 hour flat test. So why am I doing the flat test? Cause my doctor told me to. The 48 hour flat test is used for patients who are suspected to have a CSF leak and you want to test out what exactly the postural component of their headache and other symptoms is. So my doctor has ordered that I do the flat test in order to see how my headache and other symptoms resolve or don't over the 48 hours that I'm flat. The point is to determine what the postural component, um, the point is to determine how much of a postural component my symptoms ha I cannot even talk right now. This is really frustrating. This is why I have to lay down, guys. I was supposed to stand up for three hours and now I can't talk. I'm trying to do an intro and I can't talk and I'm all sweaty. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other side and try that sentence again. No, I'm not. I'm too tall over here. I skipped my nap. I don't know if I said this yet, but the point is to see if there's a postural component. So I'm honestly a little bit upset that they are making me do this 48 hour flat test, given that I have a newborn. If I was an average patient without a newborn, okay. If I was a patient that hasn't already been spending the last six months or so doing the laying down in bed every day thing because I figured out on my own that there's a huge postural component. How did this sentence start? If that wasn't the case, then I would understand that they need to test my postural component. But to me, if a patient says, if I don't lay down for a couple hours during the day, then I'm a vegetable at night. And if I do lay down, then I'm chatty at night then, I mean, I think alarm bells should be going off in these doctors' heads like, wow, this is so postural. But I keep getting told that it's not postural. So we are doing the 48 hour flat test. And since you guys don't know me in person, you guys don't know my character, or you only know what I actually explicitly say here, I would not ever expect an exception. Just, I guess that's the whole sentence. I would never expect an exception. I was hoping for one in this case because I thought that it made logical sense. Like, now my poor husband has to take two full days off to watch the newborn and I have to take two full days off to lay there and I don't know how this is gonna work out with everything. But um, my husband's a champion. I'm dreading this but a little bit excited because I think it's gonna be really nice to not move. And I guess my final parting thought is just that I'm personally very excited to see how my body responds to this test. I'm sorry, I'm like super sweaty and my hair is driving me crazy because I'm sweaty. Uh, I'm not migraine gen yet, but I'm tremoring and confused. I skipped my nap today. It's a long time for me to stand up also. It's been uh, five and a half minutes. Yeah, fellow potsies, you guys know five and a half minutes. We're hitting that danger zone right now. Okay. Where I was going with those last thoughts before I start this 48 hour flat test that I'm now officially three minutes late for. Um, crap, 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 crap. Oh no, I'm so dizzy, I'm so dizzy. Let's sit down. Okay, can you guys see me? Oh, you can see me, okay, well, that's ugly. I forget where I was going with my sentence. I forget even where it started. Um, I remember that, oh, it was final thoughts. My final thoughts on this. Oh yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I have been dealing with these debilitating symptoms for four or five years. It's been way too long. I've been officially diagnosed with POTS, chronic migraine, and orthostatic hypotension, tentatively with EDS, though we haven't done the genetic side yet, and a CSF leak is only one of the many possibilities that could be underlying. I don't think that chronic migraine is necessarily a misdiagnosis because I do truly feel like I get migraines. I fit that. But I also feel like there is a missed diagnosis, as in like M-I-S-S-E-D, like missed a diagnosis, I do feel like there's something underlying. I'm not convinced that it's a CSF leak, but if this 48 hour flat test is consistent with a CSF leak, then that'll just be one more 
clue in this crazy puzzle that is my body. What's your name? Jennifer. False alarm, totally forgot that. Before I go flat, I have to fill out this paperwork. So, really quick survey about my symptoms, what I'm feeling right now, and then I have to feel it again. Woo, stuttering. Fill it out again at 48 hours, and then I have to be up for three more hours at the end of the test, and then I fill it out, fill it out again after I'm upright for those three hours. I have a very low headache, pain, and I'm like a five for pressure, neck pain, nausea, concentrating memory, difficulty with thinking, thinking, concentration, or memory. They put thinking twice on the paperwork for confused people. <laughs> but I caught it. That was part of the test. Neck pain, stiffness, definitely worse than normal. My nausea is... <sighs> Anyone else like severely overthink these surveys? Thankfully, I didn't look up what the results of the test are supposed to be, so I actually have no idea what they're looking for. Better that way. Just be honest, or else you're going to send them on a false trail, and that's not what you want when you're desperate. What's today's date? Date of test. April 30th, I think? April 30th. This is really weird. I do feel like I'm about to embark on some kind of crazy journey, but really all I'm gonna do is go upstairs and lay down, and then it started. But like, I've been hyping myself up for this. <sighs> yeah, let's go lay down. I feel like garbage. Well, I'm bored. You know, when people talk about a staycation, it kinda sounds fun, but I don't think that this staycation is gonna be very fun. <sighs> so, Rules for the flat test. Your head is supposed to stay at or below the level of your hips. So, if I'm on my back, they said no pillow. If I turn to my side, I'm allowed to use a small pillow. And they said I can also lift my head every once in a while if I'm unable to take sips of water when I'm laying down like this. But other than that, I'm allowed to get up to pee. And that's it. I really can't wait to see how I feel on Sunday. Okay, honey. It's hard to roll over without letting your head come up. But I'm committed. Why are you sticking your butt at the camera? Maybe we should... Good morning! It's a new day! Hi, we survived our first night. I think I went flat around 4.30 p.m. yesterday, and I actually have not even looked at the clock today, because who cares? Look at this hair. Yep. Being flat is much harder than I expected it would be, and if I had tried being flat for a few hours before I did this, I would have packed a lot more stuff. You happy, girl? Where's your smile? She was just smiling. Tip number one, tip number one for the 48 hour flat test is gonna be don't have a newborn. It is deceptively difficult. So what I have down here is um, her changing pad, their diapers, wipes, bib. I have a bottle already over there because, yeah, because I don't produce breast milk. Got her toys, another little laying mat in case I want to put her on the floor. I already appreciated my husband yesterday before we started, but the baby kept him up all night. She kind of kept both of us up all night. I'm not sure what my husband deserves for all this, but if you guys can think of any way that I can repay him for not only taking care of me and migraine Jen, but the baby and the dog for 48 hours straight. I can't even get my own ketchup. You know, I can't go get dressed. I have to be like, oh, I want these jeans and blah, blah, blah. So he is waiting on us all weekend, literally. 
I'm so full of gratitude and honestly some guilt as well for for being sick, this sick that, that I have to put our family through this. Okay, that's all. My mouth is dry. I'm gonna ask my husband for some chapstick. Or did I pack some? I might have actually packed some for myself. I can't look up on the table because I have to stay down here. So I have to wait for him. Okay, anyway, so you guys get the struggle. Okay, love you, see you in a bit, bye. Hi, fuzzy pants. Okay, watch, this is so hard to do with one hand. I'm trying to film now too, but... Okay. Come on, just... Oh, uh, yeah, girly? So I've gotta hold this up and over. Come on, snaps, you got this. Yeah. It's just not worth it for every diaper change when you have to do it with one hand. You've been so happy sometimes. Bip, bop, ba. It. She's chatty. Um, Kate, what was I saying, babes? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Um, right before you go flat, you're supposed to be upright for a few hours. So during my upright time yesterday, I went ahead and helped my husband with making a breakfast bake so that in the mornings all he has to do is microwave it so he's downstairs doing that right now and I'm watching her by the skin of my teeth and then uh yeah we're gonna eat some breakfast this is an official behind the scenes whoa look at my hand shadow <laughs> I'm leaving that in um guys behind the scenes things you probably didn't even think about because I didn't now my husband has to set up the shot so that you guys can see the B-roll of us eating breakfast. So on top of all this, am I really the one making this YouTube? Because I feel like my husband is the one who just set up all the lights, who just set up the camera and the tripod and made sure the shot was all lined up for you guys. I don't know what I feel, but I feel a lot of it. Love, guilt. I think those are the biggest ones. Gratitude, obviously. That's the biggest one. That's all. I'm st Oh, and hunger. I'm starving. <laughs> Hey friends, hello, hello. If my math is correct, we're at 18 hours down and 30 hours to go. My mind is feeling really good and my body is feeling really restless. I think that's reasonable. I'm definitely feeling like my body is stiff, so I think I'm gonna try to do some really flat stretching, but I feel excited that my brain's awake and I wanna do things. Um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the amount of pressure that's in my head. I definitely wish I was tilted up a little bit because of my orthostatic intolerance, like my orthostatic hypotension doesn't like being like this. But I think that whatever's going on with my migraines is really loving this. And this is really weird, but this morning I actually feel very curious. I feel a curiosity that I haven't felt in a while. I kind of feel present. I feel really present right now. That's why I'm looking around so much. Sorry, I'm not making eye contact. I'm just talking and kind of being in the moment. I didn't mean to ignore you. It's hard to talk to nobody and have nobody to steer the conversation. You're just staring it with yourself. So there's my update. I'm really taking this time to reflect on life and what things I can do when I'm upright to be a better person and a better mom. I've also been feeling a lot of emotions during this because even though it's like supposed to be a relaxing thing, I'm supposed to lay here and relax, it's actually been kind of stressful for me and chaotic. The baby is chaos and I feel like I could have done a better job preparing for this. I feel like I was a little bit naive going into this. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't anticipate that the hard thing was going to be something other than boredom or feeling a little bit restless. I didn't think that it was going to be emotionally. And I guess emotional isn't even the word for it because I'm feeling so calm. I'm just feeling so at peace and sure of myself and sure of my body. It's weird. I feel like my brain re-entered my body. Okay, now I'm starting to feel emotional. That's what, that's what the feeling is that I'm feeling.
thank you for letting me talk this out before I started talking to you guys about this. I didn't really know what exactly it was that I was noticing in myself. I just knew that it was a lot. I don't have DID, but I'm certainly feeling a new level of presence with the lack of symptoms that I'm feeling this morning. Oh, and one more really interesting thing. When I stand up to go to the bathroom, it sucks. I thought I was going to really look forward to my bathroom breaks because they were going to be the only time I get to get up. And no, I don't want to get up. I don't want to mess anything up. I want to stay right here because last night when I got up to go to the bathroom, I was seeing spots. So I came and laid back down and went to bed and everything. But this morning when I got up to go to the bathroom, I didn't see spots. But then when I laid down, my head was hurting again. It seems like something's equilibrating when I'm flat and that standing up really is a bad idea for me right now. So I'm looking forward to what happens with the remaining 30 hours of this test. I'm wondering if tomorrow afternoon we might see scientist Jen again for the first time in literally years. I can't remember how many years it's been since I haven't been in a migraine phase. All right, ta-ta for now. The husband points are getting overwhelming because he saved three small surprises for me for during my flat test for when I thought I was going to lose my mind. And I think that's really cool of him because I didn't even think I was going to lose my mind. My dad has recently been getting really into our ancestry, my family's ancestry, and we found out not only that I'm a Mayflower baby and a lot of other stuff that I can't remember right now, but I'm also a descendant of a Viking king. So this is an order from a company called Grimfrost, and apparently they make Viking stuff. Right now we have a hutch. Oh, you guys actually saw the hutch. Yeah, you guys saw the hutch earlier in this video. So that's full of my husband's family stuff. There's nothing from my family stuff. So we ordered some Viking things to go um, in that hutch. For your birthday. For my birthday. My husband wanted to get them for me for my birthday. So we picked them out together and I was meant to open it next week because I'm turning 30 next week. Oh my gosh, it's like real cast iron. These are really good quality. They're made with traditional tools. Oh yeah? My new pint glass for beer. <laughs> that is so cool. It's made from a single piece horn. A single piece horn and then they heat it. They heat it to bend the handle or something. Wow, it's beautiful. That's a big one. And it's just such a beautiful piece. And it comes with a stand. I have to figure out how to use it. These are amazing. They're even better in person than they were on the website, if I'm being totally honest. Don't you think? Yeah. Like, these have exceeded my expectations. It says, Vikings used many different drinking vessels ranging from primitive cones of rolled birch bark to silver cups and horns. Horns were also used during important gatherings, festivities, and rituals. Which means the proper way to do my family heritage would be to use this on my 30th birthday next week. Or actually, you guys will be watching. By the time you guys see this, it'll be last week. Yep, we're doing it. Baby is almost helpful enough to make this work easily. Yeah, grab it and we put it in your mouth. And then we drop it. But you're close. You've done 10 seconds, right? Got coffee in my Bryce cup. And this is my pineapple straw. Straws are necessary for the 48 hour flat test. Is coffee better through a straw? Because I've been told that everything is better through a straw. So much worse. No, you don't get the coffee. You don't drink coffee for the flavor. You drink it for the experience of it touching your mouth. Coffee is more of a feeling. It's the elixir of life. You're not getting the aroma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm missing the, you know, I want the steam on my face. Open my pores. It's the morning. Is it actually the morning? It's probably like one, huh? It's, uh, yeah, 1230. <laughs> I had to check. I'm starting to feel like a second wind. I know that's weird, but it's it's not the coffee yet because it I haven't drank enough, but I do feel like I'm starting to feel a second wind, like I can make it to the end because at least now I'm approaching that there will be a second half eventually. And... Now you have a Viking horn, so that's cool. And now I have a Viking horn, yeah. It's been really nice. They're sitting here on the table, so I get to look at them. Okay, see you guys later. I'll keep updating you. Mm -hmm. I think we're 24 hours in, and we haven't watched a movie yet, so we're trying to watch Pirates of the Caribbean. 
but it's been 30 minutes of trying, and we're only three minutes into the movie. Can you guess why? Babe was like, hon, what do you want for dinner? And I was like, oh, something quick and easy. How about some scrambled eggs? He comes back with a freaking omelet. Do you see this? How many toppings are on this? Like five? There's like five toppings. Bacon, onion, avocado, cheese, and he even attempted to put on hot sauce and, dare I say it, <laughs> cilantro for my... Don't tell the internet people that I mixed up cilantro and parsley. Our little secret. 26 hours in and I'm thinking, maybe it's time to change out of last night's jammies. Because it's 6.30 p.m. You really are a mini-me, aren't you? All right, we're watching Pirates of the Caribbean. We decided to make drinks that are on trend. I wish I could take credit for the idea. So, here's a little shot glass. That's Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's all worn off. Arsenic and cyanide glasses that have skulls on the bottom. We got Kraken. I don't even need to tell you why that is on trend. Oh, and ocean spray, duh. Pirates, yeah. Ooh, fancy. Are you chewing? Yeah, that's nice, huh? Feels good to chew, doesn't it? We just watched the Squeaky Boots episode of Spongebob this morning. And now you're doing a squeaky pacifier. because I don't have to care. I'm too tired to care. It is weird because I've been laying here for so long. Hi, Internet. I'm Jen and I'm drooling in a cup <laughs> sideways. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> What's up, 30,000 people? <laughs> Alright, go away. This is embarrassing. Good night. What time is it? I should check that first. It's 9.30, which means I'm 29 hours out of 48 hours into my flat test. Let me think. What's the emotion that I'm feeling? I want to put a name to it. I'm feeling really validated by this flat test. Because the longer I've been flat, the longer I want to stay flat. I've been really dreading getting up, and the longer time goes on, the worse the symptoms are when I get up. Well, sort of. I guess it's sort of been a roller coaster. Last night when I got up, I just saw spots, and this morning everything was fine. But tonight I rolled over to brush my teeth, and I almost threw up because I was so nauseous. And now, after going and using the restroom and coming to bed, my ears are whooshing, and I just feel really congested in this whole area. It's been mostly right-sided, but... My symptoms are usually so over the so all over the place during the day that I don't notice these little tiny changes. You know, it's usually just like symptoms all the time and I can't make sense of it. But since I've just been laying and my brain is on, first of all, it's 10 p.m. and I'm just talking and that's making it so I can pay attention to these symptoms and like notice this this postural thing is really blowing my mind. I knew that there was a postural component, but I didn't realize the severity of it, and I really just wish that I had learned this five years ago. So it's a lot to take in. If I had known that this was all I needed to do, or like that this was such a big component of it, you know, I don't, I don't know. Just to figure out something that's so big, that's such a big clue that I can give to my doctors, like this test is going to be so invaluable. Is invaluable the word I'm looking for, honey? Mm -hmm. That means super valuable, right? Yeah. Which is funny because unvaluable would be not valuable. English, mm -hmm. am I right? Here's something random that popped into my brain. I know I have a lot of subscribers from like Australia and the UK and all over the world. Some of you guys send me really sweet messages and you say, I'm so sorry that my English is bad. 
It's not my first language. Homie Dizzle, if you know any English words, I'm super impressed. If you make any sentence that makes any sense to me, I'm impressed. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me because I love talking to you guys. I talk to the camera and when you guys message me and comment down there and like push the like button and all that, that's you guys talking back to me. Otherwise, I'm just talking to myself and then I feel weird and I already feel weird. Talking to myself in bed while my husband's reading. English is a hard language. Oh, right. I forgot I was even talking about that. Yeah, English is such a difficult language. It's the only one I know, and I still don't know it. Well, if my brain comes back from something that we find from this test, maybe I can learn some more words again. Because Indubitably. Indubitably. Because I have forgotten a lot of words through this migraine process including laboratory ones, and I'm really upset about that. Oh, honey, that's exciting. Can I tell you one more thing? Mm -hmm. I did something that not migraine gen does at almost 10 p.m. with no board of medications or anything, really. I haven't even had ginger today. Are you ready for what I did? Mm -hmm. I started looking at chemical equations. I was analyzing chemical equations for the first time in how long? When was the last time I set foot in a lab? April 2019? What is up with my brain? I'm tripping guys okay good night i'll see you in the morning six hours left we're gonna make it Buddy literally just laid down to be with the baby. This is the cutest thing. She was already here on her blanket and he just squeezed himself in. Let's see your ball. Oh, here it is. He dropped her the ball. Ooh. Buddy has the biggest heart. I don't know what we did to get him. I certainly don't feel like we deserve him. Oh my gosh, my whole world is right here. Uh-oh. Okay, gotta go clean that up. I get to get up now. And I'm excited, but I'm scared. So I'm putting it off, which is weird. I thought I would jump up, but I don't want to get up. When I've sat up the last couple of days, I've gotten up really quickly. I've stayed kind of hunched over and shuffled over to the bathroom really fast to do that and come right back and lay back down. And I was trying not to be up to, whoa, don't do that. Be up too upright or anything like that. Am I, can you see that I'm wearing shorts? Yeah. Guys, I'm wearing fish shorts. Okay. I've got my calves on the couch for a balance. I'm feeling good. But I'm dizzy. Okay. I'm gonna sit down until Buddy comes back in. But my legs feel a little odd. I feel like I feel them too much. Like there's a lot of feeling in my feet right now. My hands are tingling now. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple hours while I'm upright. I have to stay upright now for two to three hours. I'm sweating. Now my heart's racing. Yeah, my feet are so like tense. My legs are wanting to stay really contracted right now. But I think it's just because I'm I can move, I can move. I'm stuttering a little bit. I can feel like every movement that my head makes. And that's why it's so hard to balance. Because you have balance? That you don't normally have? Right. Try lifting one leg. Started tingling. Oh, let's go sit back down. I'm tremoring. I'm gonna turn it off. This is cool.